Hi, I know there's quite a few people out there who like watching me do these parametric design searches and component selection and things like that. And I was just working on a little uh, project where I needed a couple of three digit uh, LCD, seven segment LCD, uh, LCD display, uh, just little uh, PCB mount ones. And I needed a microcontroller to actually drive those because if you know about uh, basic seven segment LCD displays. I'm not talking about the dot matrix ones here, but the individual segment ones like you get in your uh, wristwatch or, or calculator product or something like that. You need special LCD driving circuitry to actually drive all those segments. So I thought I'd just show you uh, some uh, parametric uh, searching here on DigiKey, searching for uh, the LCD and a suitable microcontroller and see if there's any uh, traps in here. So let's go. So let's type LCD into our DigiKey search engine here, and uh, I can use other sites. I just uh, prefer DigiKey at the moment. You can use Mouser or uh, Farnell Element 14 or other ones, um, Jamica or something like that if you really want to. But let's go into, we want um, LCD modules, um, LCD uh, OLED character and, and numeric. And we want, um, basically I'd be happy with anything from say a four and a half, di I only need a uh, three digit one, but uh, I'll search up to say four and a half digits in this um, parametric column here, number of digits. So let's go like that. Let's select from three through to uh, four and a half digits. And as a first pass, so we apply our filter there. And how many have we got? We've got 38, uh, 38 entries for that. So what we'll do is we'll sort by price because once again, big driver is always uh, sorting by price. So I'll do my part quantity as 100 and bingo, it's resorted those LCDs. And then the cheapest one up there is a Lumix one by the looks of it. So let's take a look at that. It's a dollar 61 each in 100 of quantity. Okay, not too bad. The others sort of jump up to $2.00. Uh, range over here yeah okay so that's a pretty good uh pretty good price range there i'm pretty happy with that so let's go in and have a look at that one it's a dip uh package like this so it's uh you know it's you can mount it on the pcb and that should be fairly nice for my needs uh so let's go in and have a look at the um well how many uh segment well we'll find out that let's open the data sheet shall we let's go in and go straight to the lumix website and Here's your data sheet for it. And uh, as you can see, one of the important things you need to note about these segment LCDs is how they're actually uh, configured. Now, this pin table uh, arrangement you've got in here, let me zoom in on that. And uh, you'll see that this is a look, this looks like a single common uh, chip because here it is it's they've arranged this uh, a bit weird this table it should just be in one big long thing but they've got three rows there of the pin numbers one through 24 it's a 24 pin device and you'll see pin number one is com so how this display operates it's got the one common terminal for all of the segments and then a separate pin for each one of the segments so each one of those um seven segments there will have its own pin and there's only one common terminal but not all lcds uh, will operate like that they might be they might have multiple common terminals and that's important when you go to select uh your lcd driver chip as we'll um see or your or your microcontroller that's designed to drive um, that has a built-in LCD module that's designed to drive these LCDs. It's got to not only support the number of segments, but also the number of commons as well. So when we go, if we're happy with this LCD, we would go and search for a microcontroller that has LCD capability, that has at least one common terminal, supports at least one common terminal, and up to uh, 20, well, actually 23 uh, segments but uh, once again maybe if you don't need the uh, decimal points or something like that then you could uh, eliminate one that maybe only had say uh, 21 or 22 segments um, and that could be a big driver if you're looking for say a 44 pin microcontroller or something they may not be able to support the number of common segments you've got but anyway um, that looks like not a bad uh, uh, LCD at all, but uh, let's go and have a look at some others here. Let's go back and uh, That's a three-digit display. Maybe if we went for a, a Veritronics one 
here that's a four digit uh, display what have we got we've got another Veritronics one let's go in and have a look at this one here what does it cost two dollars okay let's go in have a look download the data sheet for it thankfully the internet works reasonably quickly I said well almost didn't get away with saying that uh, you'll notice that this one has um, it's a three and a half digit but it's got the uh, plus minus uh, as well and it looks like it's got a little uh, arrow up the top as well so um, you can get all these um, LCDs come in all sorts of weird and wonderful uh, configurations and you'll notice that this one is also um, just a single uh, common by the looks of it now the other thing to consider when you're looking at uh, LCDs like this is whether or not it comes in what type it is now it's got display type up here and this is twisted pneumatic but that's not what I'm talking about that's more the that's more the uh, actual technology used to manufacture it um, and used to display it but the display type I'm talking about is this reflective type and the transflective type and the difference between the reflective one is if um, the reflective one will not work with the backlight it means it's got a silver mirrored like reflective uh, back in underneath the segment so you're relying on external light to uh, bounce back off that mirror and uh, and come back to you there's no ability to put a generally no ability to put a backlight on those so uh, maybe you can get like an edge lit uh, backlight or something like that perhaps but you actually can't get one behind the surface of the segments and these are really good if you don't want a backlight and you want the highest possible contrast um, the highest possible readability in a um, you know in like a daytime type environment um, whereas the transflective type here uh, that will um, they will actually as the name suggests it's trans reflective so it it's semi reflective it does sort of reflect but not as good as the true reflective one but it also allows light to come through from the back so you can actually put a uh, backlight behind it so if you do want to integrate a backlight a transflective type may actually be better for that purpose and you'll notice that uh, this particular model number uh, uh, Lumix one actually comes in two types the TR at the end and the TF one's reflective one's transflective so you choose the best one based so we'll just go back here and we'll back to the main selection uh, screen up here and we'll actually choose one that has um, more uh, digits we'll choose one of these 14 segment ones so we'll actually reset that and instead of a seven segment display we might have a look at one of these 14 segment ones because then you can get um, alpha uh, type ability not just uh, numbers on there as well but there you go that's uh, two dollars ninety two uh, there's not too many of them but here's one in a hundred off it's dollar eighty two it's not too bad at all and that's actually an eight digit uh, 14 segment display so that's quite capable and maybe um, in my product I might be able to integrate uh, both displays into the one if I used this um, eight character display so it might actually uh, work out cheaper instead of buying two uh, three digit ones might be able to buy one of these uh, eight digit ones and have a uh, 14 segment uh, capability as well so let's go in and uh, see if we can find the data sheet for this thing product photos catalog drawing and no but that's what it's that's what it looks like they're going to be the characters um, as, as you can see instead of your standard seven segment it's actually got that uh, 14 segment also known as a uh, starburst uh, type display as well and with those you can display uh, letters as well as uh, numbers and other uh, symbols which was really quite neat but I don't seem to be able to get the data sheet for this one well just for a bit of a change I'm going to actually search uh, mouser here and uh, type LCD into here and we'll go into LCD displays they've got 4040 of them I'll just see what they've got they might have uh, something slightly different we'll go into LCD displays we don't want modules we don't want drivers because our uh, we're going to have a microcontroller to drive this thing and we want a numeric display not a character based display so we'll click 361 of them and let's uh, once again select number of digits from three to say four and a half 
let's apply that filter and see what we get. We get 79 matches and then what we'll do, we've got our pricing column here, we'll sort via ascending price, so we want the cheapest first. Um, unfortunately, it's not unlike unlike the DigiKey one, it doesn't let you um, put in a quantity, say, you know, I want the price for a thousand and up or a hundred and up, um, but at least it does give you the price uh, breaks in the column here. And whoa, look at this first one, there's no photos, but in hundred of quantity, we're at 95 cents, whoa. Now we're talking transflective, available in reflective. It's a Lumex one. Again, it's the um, S401 instead of the S301. And there's that same S301 that we had before from DigiKey. And it looks actually a bit cheaper from Mouser there. There you go, $1.30 in 50 of uh, quantity, $1.27 in 50 of quantity down in there. But let's go and have a look at this one up here. They've only got 89 in stock, not a huge amount of stock for the transflective one there. Um, and they've got uh, non-stocked here, a lead time of nine weeks, ouch, for the uh, reflective type. So you'd have to be careful to design, if you wanted to design that one in, uh, you'd have to be very careful about uh, stock and things like that, looking for alternative supplies. This one down here, which we've been uh, playing with, no problems at all. There's 1,197 in stock, 4,333 of the reflective um, type so there's quite a big difference anyway I want to go in and I want to look at the data sheet for this top one up here the bingo the LCD S401 there you go it's only got it's through hole once again but it's only on one side very low pin count which means it's probably going to uh, multiplex the commons or it has to let's go right down Look at the display here. It's uh, got megapascals, kilopascals, uh, PSI. So um, obviously this is like a, a one designed for um, some sort of pressure gauge or something like that. But if you didn't want to use that, you could just uh, disable those segments, of course, not not drive them and use it as a four-digit uh, display. No problems at all, as long as it met your uh, size requirements. And here we go. Here's the pinout table. And... This is what I'm talking about. There you go. Com0 there. Once again, pin numbers 1 through to 13. And uh, uh, common 0, common 1, common 2, and common 3. So it's got four common pins. So if you want to drive this display, you, as we'll see later, you'll need a microcontroller that can drive up to uh, a four common segments with up to... Um, uh, what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine uh, segments. So you'd need four commons by nine segments to drive this display. And it's a very attractive uh, price point for that one. But, well, I think just for uh, argument's sake, we'll go back to this one here. It's a safer uh, choice. And we'll try and find a microcontroller that has a single common and can support up to 23 segments. So in DigiKey here, we'll type in microcontroller. We're going to be very broad. I could go to the direct to the manufacturers if I was a microchip fanboy or an Atmel fanboy or a TI fanboy. I could go directly to their uh, websites and do parametric searches there, but I'm not too fussed about the brand. So I'm going to go in and search 32,000 different microcontrollers here. There it is, 32, 651 of them. And I'm going to try and use the parametric search. Now, the problem with this is you're not always going to get it right because DigiKey may not always capture the correct um, uh, information in the peripheral column here for the chip. So you could miss out um, on the odd device. But I need to go through. Unfortunately, there's no column where I can just select LCD. So I've got to go through and look for any one of these that actually have LCD in them in the parametric search. So I go through da, 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 LCD, LCD, and this all means it'll have an LCD module in it. And uh, we should, it's a bit tedious, so I might skip through this part. And so I've tediously selected all the ones through there, so that have LCD in them. And you cross your fingers that DigiKey have done their jobs. The Oompa Loompas at DigiKey have uh, imported all this data correctly and we've got 2,306 
microcontrollers of all of these different manufacturers Atmel, Cirrus, Cypress, Energy Micro, Freescale, Fujitsu, Maxim, Microchip, blah 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 blah, Renesis, oh, Sharp, Micron, ST, Toshiba, Zilog, oh, it's all there. So no shortage of manufacturers who make microcontrollers with LCD drivers in them, but we care about A, the price, and B, that it supports the number of digits we're after and we need a couple of other features i want an adc built in a couple of channels say you know two or three channels of adc would be uh nice as well well pretty essential actually so what we'll do is we'll um search for uh price over here and unit price let's do say a hundred of which is a nice sort of round value to give you an idea for um sort of you know short run uh, prototypes or first run prototypes and what have we got uh, first up um, it looks like the uh, cheapest one we've got here is a freescale rs uh, 08 but will that have the number of io required number of io 26 well i know for a fact that it's not going to do it so we actually need um, probably up here to search for a higher number of io because we need at least 23 uh, segments plus the uh, pin as well. So if we go up, so we need, so there's 24 pins right there that we need. So let's start from say 30 upwards, because uh, really if we, you know, max out at say 102 or something like that, I don't want a device that big. It'll probably be overkill and too expensive, but we've narrowed that down even further. And let's do our, um, uh, well, our uh, price search is already there. And the first one up the top, is a PIX 16F1934. So there you go, the cheapest one on the market, according to DigiKey, cheapest microcontroller you can get. Too bad if you're an Atmel or a TI fanboy, sorry. Um, yeah, they're not, they don't even register on the first page. If we go to the next page, they're PIX, PIX, PIX. Whoa, we get, just get into an NXP. There, there we go. That that would um, LPC. It looks like an ARM uh, device. It is. It's a 32-bit ARM Cortex M0. How much does that one go for? That's a whopping three dollars and thirteen cents. Thank you very much. Massively expensive compared to if we go back and go back. We've got our 16LF. Um, oh, sorry. Let's go forward. Our 16F1934 there is only $1.68. What a bargain. So let's go in and take a look at that. I really want that sucker. And let's go in and have a look at the product brief for it and pick, pick 16F1930X um, device, presumably just different memory features. Yes, here it is. The 1934 has uh, 4K of uh, program memory, 256 bytes of EEPROM. I didn't mention that. I will need some EEPROM, I think. Um, 36 IO, uh, which should be enough. And bingo, over here, this is what we care about, this column over here, the LCD segments and commons. As you can see, ah, perfect. Supports up to 24 segments with four commons. So we could drive four of those displays we've been looking at with this one uh, $1.60 in 100 quantity pick chip. Awesome. I love it. It's got uh, it's got I squared C, UART, four uh, 8-bit timers, and once again, it's got 14 channels of 10-bit analog to digital converter. Heaps. So there's no reason why we can't use that. Or is there? Now, as I'm sure I've mentioned before, one of the traps with using and selecting microcontrollers like this is that a lot of or most of the functionality of these devices, like the LC all the built-in peripherals, the LCDs, the uh, the uh, timers, the ADCs, and the I squared Cs, and all the peripherals and things like that, PWM outputs, capture compare modules, uh, comparators, whatever, a lot of them share uh, pin functionality. So you can't use both of them. Often you can't use two competing things at the same time. So we might, this thing might very well, well, I guarantee you, it'll be able to drive these 24 segments at up to four displays, but do those pins map to some of the analog to 14 analog to digital channels that we want to use? So if they do, 
we're screwed. We won't be able to do both. If those, if we want to use an I squared C port, for example, are, are those I squared C interface pins overlapping our LCD segments? It's very likely, but um, you know, odds are you're going to get a couple of analog to digital convert, uh, converters which don't share the same pin. So. Really, um, that's my main requirement at the moment, I think, is my analog to digital converters and the LCDs. They've got to be separate. So let's go down and see if we can actually find the pin mapping information. That's the 28-pin device. We don't want that. We're going to be using the 40-pin. Uh, uh, oh, it comes in at, there you go, it comes in a PDIP uh, package. But I was pretty sure the DigiKey one is, yep, a quad flat pack. Uh, probably can get it in other packages perhaps i don't know 40 pin dip no uqfn no looks like digikey aren't going to stock that sucker in at least not in this price range anyway um the the dip ah oh, 16 19 37 anyway let's not muck around with that let's have a look at the pin allocation table because that's going to tell us everything we need to know and here we go this is the 40 slash 44 pin allocation table for the 16F1934 and you've got to choose your right device and it can get complicated and here's the column we want here the LCD uh, column and once again the segments it tells you which pins over here the RA0 pin is segment 12 for example um, and we go through and there's some uh, various uh, LCD voltage uh, pins as well that it requires so let's see if they interfere with our analog to digital column here's our analog to digital column down here and as you can see segments they overlap i okay no like an4 segment 5 an12 uh oh this ain't looking promising um well hey no look there we go com1 we're not using com1 so we could get one analog to digital channel on rb5 pin rb5 there which is analog channel 13 on COM1. So if we're, no, sorry, we're gonna drive two displays. Well, I could use one of the other common pins. Okay, I don't have to use COM0 on COM1. Could actually use COM0 on COM3, I guess. So um, looks like we might be able to squeeze out an analog pin there, but the others are mapping the segments down here. And if we want our decimal points, there's segment 23 want both decimal points oh we're struggling maybe if we dropped one of those decimal points if we didn't if we only needed the one fixed decimal point and we can, might be able to squeeze out a second analog to digital channel an7 on pin re2 there but that's it what do you know murphy screws us around again it ensured that almost all of these analog to digital converter pins were mapped to the lcd pins and that i think that's going to have to rule out this device right there because i really wanted um uh, probably three uh analog to digital uh converter um channels there so really ah oh, not that happy with that at all we might have to scrap this device right there let alone looking further into if you want uh, PWM outputs or something like that. Here's our capture compare module, CCP3 capture compare um, uh, modules there, and you'd have to look to see if they correlate to the LCD pins. But that's that's really tricky business, as you can see. Just uh, selecting the right device, unless we completely go overkill and we get like a hundred pin device or something, then you're you know, you're almost guaranteed that you're going to get the functionality you need on that. But I think we're going to have to rule this one out, perhaps. What a bummer. But that's the detail. If you rushed in and bought some of these devices based on just the, uh, you know, the based on the feature set um, up here and that, yeah, it has all these segments and meets all my specs, rushed out and bought that, designed that into your product, into your board, then, well, you could find yourself up the uh, proverbial creek without a paddle. So I won't bore you with the details of actually going through and trying to find the correct microcontroller here because it could take all day and I've got to go back and check my specs and see which ones are a little bit flexible here and there, what my, you know, sort of toss around my price targets, what they're going to be and things like that and sort of trade a few things off perhaps. And yeah, it literally could take all day or several days just to 
do this and select the correct uh, micro control microcontroller for this particular product and this is and i hope you can appreciate this this is only for two the detail that we've had to go into here for just two simple parameters like lcd and adc trade-off versus price at a low price point imagine if you're trying to you know juggle five different peripherals you need built into your um, microcontroller and you can't just choose the top of the range one because you're trying to meet a price target maybe a pin target as well you don't want to use a you know a huge couple hundred pin device or a bga device which requires you to have a, a, a different assembler who can handle that pitch bga you know if you choose one of those arm uh those cheap integrated arm devices or something well it's a big can of worms i just uh, thought i'd uh, show you that just this simple case and how well things aren't always as they as they seem with microcontroller selection anyway i might have an update uh, on this project in the future but until then catch you next time